But I have to start off this pod, actually, unfortunately, with some sad news. Um, over the last couple of days, it's been confirmed now by various sources and by the brand itself that Span2, also known as Chris Printup, one of the co-founders of the legendary streetwear label or brand Born and Raised, unfortunately passed away. Um, really, 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 really tragic news. Um, can't really go past how tragic it is, especially when you consider the guy's journey. Um, especially consider the fact that he basically overcame, um, you know, stuff like flipping addiction, you know, things like, you know, cancer, um, growing up in a rough part of town, growing up in a single parent household, all that malarkey. And essentially he kind of, you know, pulled himself up by his bootstraps in a, you know, in, in, in a conventional sense and made a life for himself and bettered himself and his family's life with the power of streetwear, which is absolutely incredible. And I remember him more so because there was a period of time where I felt like in streetwear, it kind of shifted where all the streetwear guys suddenly wanted the approval of the fashion people, which is odd because fashion people were never going to approve streetwear. They kind of put up with it because for some reason fashion and streetwear kind of had this really interesting um you know there was a confluence happening right where they kind of both kind of met each other at the same sort of time and loads of brands on the runway were adopting you know key streetwear pieces like hoodies jeans and all that like into their runway pieces so naturally those sort of brands became a little bit more prominent but in terms of accepting the industry they never would and um but they you know still streetwear guys pursued and kept at trying to get their approval then of course all the menswear stores and buyers and whatnot shifted their buying and whatnot to Paris Fashion Week men's so that became like a thing and it's still a thing now to this day where a lot of streetwear stores menswear stores will go and set up studios and whatnot and um in Paris during Paris Men's Fashion Week and a lot of brands basically try their best to bend over backwards and appease those people and change their brand and what they do i felt like born and raised always kept true to what they are never i felt like chased the fashion cloud even though a lot of people tried to bring them on board um or were chasing them and just kept plugging away doing their own thing and kind of tragically as you know towards the end of his quote-unquote life before he even knew he was going to pass away it seemed like everything was starting to finally click for Spantu with Born and Raised like the collaborations were going up and leveling up you know with the Levi's the Nike SB's about to come out and these were you know one of the better Nike SB um, dunklers we've seen in a very long time in terms of what he'd been able to do in the colorway and how he's able to design that shoe and re you know basically reimagine a dunk something that's been a little bit overused in the last few years and it felt like they were about to hit another level. And then just as they're about to hit another level, just as they're about to hit another level, tragedy strikes and he passes away. And it's really, really sad to be fair. I'm not going to lie because I can only imagine what his family and friends are kind of going through because he was always very family orientated, um, always kind of pushed the brand in terms of being an avenue and the ability for him to look after his family, to pay them back for all the years he put them through of grief, growing up graffiti and getting arrested, all this malarkey, right? And he kind of used the brand as a way to kind of, hey, here's my, here's my way of essentially rewriting the legacy of my family and providing my kids and their kids a platform for them to kind of, you know, be so financially stable, to self to be self self sufficient and all this stuff going forward and it's just a real shame that he didn't get a chance to kind of see out that entire vision he just got a chance to set it up and to kind of lay the groundwork and the blueprint for it but he didn't get a chance to really see it out he kind of deserved to have that to be fair but let's read the article this is courtesy of born and raised courtesy of um sorry hype beast it says born and raised co-founder chris Panter, print up has reportedly died um because Chris Banter Chris have probably died at the moment. Details of his death have not yet been confirmed. There's a report that he died on Tuesday evening. Many of his close friends and colleagues in the industry have began paying tribute, including Ben Baller. The designer started a brand um, with Alex Two-Tone Erdman a decade ago as an ode to Venice Beach, California. Since starting a brand, Born and Race has found itself collaborating with some of the biggest franchises that come out of Los Angeles, the Lakers, the Dodgers, the Kings, the Rams, and even Los Angeles FC, the football team. The labels also joined forces with collabs with the likes of New Era and Converse. Just recently, the designer took to Instagram to share and to take a look back on his life and express how grateful he had been to be cancer free. And this is a really, really poignant post because I remember it popping across my flipping timeline of him basically reflecting on how far he's come. And he looks absolutely incredible in this picture with this amazing suit. Um, you know, great picture taken in front of this red, red kind of velvet curtains. And you read this amazing paragraph basically explaining how far he's kind of come from, you 
you know the early days and what he kind of went through to get to this point and it was a real rousing speech that you know gave me a lot of kind of motivation i'm sure probably put a tear in a lot of people's eyes so it's pretty tragic to kind of read this back and think you know what happened since then so let's read the post anyway it says i just want to take a moment to take a long hard look back what was happening what was i just want to take a moment <clears throat> I just want to take a moment to take a long, hard look back. What was happened? I just want to take a moment to take a long, hard look back. What's happened over the last 10 years? I think if you would have taken a peek at my Instagram and seen the highlight reel, you'd think it might have been easy. But for where I've started, like in the early years of my life, growing up, my dad was homeless. My mom was mentally ill. I spent a lot of my time in and out of the system from an early age, from Central Juvenile Hall to many years spent in the county. I decided that I cre to create a clothing brand while in the last time I was incarcerated. I cooked up and um, born and raised while I was out in the hall at the Supermax. I don't know if anyone who's reading this has been there, but if you have ever eaten juke balls for a month, you know the deal. Juke balls don't sound fun. They don't sound like, you know, Swedish meatballs from flipping Ikea. Let's just say that. So this guy's definitely been through it. A couple of years after working on Born and Raised, we started moving. Things were great. One month after we launched with Union, I was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Yes, terminal. So from 2013 until now, I've been battling cancer and did four years of chemo, lost hundreds of pounds on my hair and numerous times. And this explains a lot why I felt like Born and Raised disappeared. Around that time, 2013, 2014, 2015, I, like, where did they go? And they dropped the odd thing here and there, but it didn't feel like they were a presence as much on social media. And obviously, you know, um, Spanty was a big part of it because he was very forward facing in terms of, yeah, this is my brand type of thing. Bloody hell, man. Anyway, let's continue. Um, what I'm getting at is life is hard for everyone. And I want everyone to know that if you're feeling discouraged and you feel like your life, you've, you've given too many handicaps, it's okay you're going to be fine things will get better i'm cancer free i'm not incarcerated and my family has a house to live in and i want to look back at all this has happened and say thank you because just five years ago i was in the worst place of my life i've ne i've ever been and just this last week i've been i've been in vogue new york times and a bunch of other places that i'm extremely grateful for if you would have told me 10 years ago that i would have been hosting a dinner with nike on the roof of the solo house for 100 of my friends i would have never believed you so again i want to look back at all the beautiful gifts i've been given and enjoy it all thank you so much to so house california nike you thanks a few other people on here and also i want to thank my beautiful wife anna for supporting me and another person called carlos for taking this beautiful photo of me and i have a lot to be thankful for this year so it's nice that he was thankful for everything that he received it was also great to see he also received these flowers during this time i felt like he got a lot of recognition a lot of kind of you know um highlights he was on a few podcasts i saw pop up on my feed and whatnot and he was able to tell his story in his own words so that's somewhat comforting but i just feel like it's so eerie how these things happen where towards the end of these like super creative lives you look at people like Roger Abloh most recently they come they, they kind of go into flipping super overdrive in terms of the amount of output they you know in terms of the amount of creatively in terms of the amount of things that they create right in terms of output they go in absolute overdrive um you look at virgil's life towards the end he was going crazy with the collabs crazy with the collections um and then you look at flipping span to obviously or born and raised how he upped the levels really in a big way with his brand and was really starting to lay some foundations to go into the next 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 level and it kind of got cut all tragically short due to him passing away the way he did and it's even more tragic because you know the guy survived cancer you know what i mean he survived cancer he survived growing up in the mean streets of venice he survived everything else that was thrown at him and then he has to die you know allegedly in some sort of car crash and i think if what makes it even worse if i'm not mistaken knowing his history i think his dad might have passed away from the same thing if i'm not mistaken i think his dad may have passed away from the same thing if i'm not mistaken um but yeah man this is crazy so let's read the article the, the, the post curse you're born and raised official instagram account it says spanty was in a car accident on june 25th he passed away at 7 56 a.m local time june 28th in albuquerque new mexico so he's he was in hospital for a long time after the accident trying to fight it which explains why a lot of people on social media were saying to people not to 
post the RIP, um, you know, too quickly because I felt, I think a lot of people were hoping that he'd pull through. So he must have been on flipping life support or just in pain or just hanging on for dear life. And unfortunately, he couldn't. But damn, man. Um, he leaves behind his wife, Anna, and three children, Marilyn, Carter, and David, a sister, three brothers, his mother, stepmother, and stepfather, and his beloved grandparents. His family are born and raised, his extended native family, the city of Los Angeles, and the loved um, and championed and extensive network of true friends. Love, um, Alex Two-Tone, born and raised can't anyway words can't describe how terrible that is to see to be fair um r.i.p um span two from born and raised but again another reminder for me and myself like you know and others out there especially other creators um you know because we i think we all kind of suffer from you know flipping procrastination and self-doubt and stuff like it's really important to get out your vision um because you're never really sure how long you have on this flipping spinning ball hurling through space there is no guarantee that you're ever going to see tomorrow for any of us in any way shape or form and it is important if you've been bestowed gifts and talents to really put it out there and express yourself because you never know who this stuff can touch that's one of the kind of somewhat comforting things about this whole thing right alex has been able to you know i'm, I'm sorry um Span to be able to put together a pretty sick cup brand with a really clear vision um you know he's basically the venice beach champion um he speaks about venice more enthusiastically than anyone i know on social media or in internet overall the only person i can think of who speaks as highly about venice beach is maybe toke um pot lord from flipping no jump extended family who also part of like what's it called biggest bros but he's also champion his area, champion his family, use the brand as an avenue to kind of take his family out from the depths of poverty. All this amazing stuff that he's able to do, um, I think is an inspiration for everybody else going forward. That, hey, you can also do this as well in your own way. And that's maybe the somewhat comforting thing of it, that he was able to put out his gifts, put out his talents, showcase them, and inspire people to do their own version of what he'd been able to do. So if you're not doing that, then you're obviously not going to be able to impact people soon after you've passed. So that's something that has been on my mind. It's something that I've also felt about, you know, ever since kind of Virgil passed about, you know, the lasting kind of influence and legacy that he kind of left um, in the time that he was around and how much he got done in that very short concentrated space of time. So um, RIP to span to again, um, thoughts and feelings go out to all his close family and friends. I cannot imagine what they're going through. It must be an absolutely tragic, tragic time. And, and yeah i can only just hope that they get some sort of comfort from knowing that the guy did it you know what i mean he said he set out to do what you know he said he set out what he wanted to do he did it in the best way possible he shined amazingly bright and he was able to kind of touch many people with the power of streetwear with the power of fashion with the power of community and now um his legacy will live far 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 beyond the year that he was basically on this earth so that might be some comfort to it regardless but again certainly prayers and strength to his entire family man i can't imagine what they're going through i really 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 can